What's the theme I'm filled with treats and screams? Cyber Wonderland After Dark Sorry, Halloween is not what it seems Cyber Wonderland After Dark The four movies are still an A+. Greetings, Space Rangers. This is Matt Hara Patrick, and welcome back to Cyber Wonderland After Dark. And for this episode, we're going to talk about a holiday jam. Well, we see a bunch of scary moments from Pixar. Clowns, angular fish, hallucinations, birds eating like grasshoppers. How about a story where a bunch of toys get stuck in a stormy motel? Not dark enough? Trust me, it will. Toy Story Terror is a Halloween special that aired on October 16, 2013. The Toy Story movies were my favorite Pixar movies, and I still consider them to be the best anime tetralogy out of all the franchises that made four or more movies. I'm not even that hesitant over the fifth movie announcement. The truth is, we've all seen many kinds of toy adventures after the events of the third movie, and each of them gets better than the last, from the Toy Story tunes like Hawaiian Vacation, Small Fry, and Party Source Rex, to the holiday specials like That Time for God and Toy Story of Terror. The last one in particular is the most famous Toy Story special without actually taking place on Halloween. However, there are some things that go bump in the night, and you cannot imagine what kind of journey Woody, Buzz, and the gang have gone through. So, why is it considered a holiday gem? Well, let's look over this story. It starts out with Woody and the gang watching a horror movie on the TV while taking a car ride with Bonnie, the little girl who became their new owner from the third movie. During their movie time, Jesse doesn't seem to be scared a bit, but when the car hit a bum tipping Jesse over the toolbox, she panics in fear because she was abandoned in a box for years from her old owner, Emily. Buzz and Woody rescue her, but the car got a flat tire, so Bonnie, her mom, and the other toys will have to stay in the Sleepwell Motel for the night. After the family checks in and goes to bed, Mr. Potato Head wants to check out some of the free stuff. Everyone left the backpack together to avoid getting separated, while Jesse ran out for some open space. But when they did a roll call, Mr. Potato Head is gone. Some assume there's a ghost around, while others believe it's something else, logically. Rex and Buzz find some weird-looking slime on the floor, followed by a trail of it down the vent. Trixie got too close to it and fell down. The others went down, but Trixie is nowhere to be found. While Prickle Pants explained the tactics of being part of a horror movie, he and Red got snatched up Flash. Woody, Buzz, and Jesse tried to run from the monster, but they hit a dead end. Thankfully, it wasn't the monster. It was Potato Head's arm. They make their way to the bathroom and use the arm to point out where the others might be. Jesse heard a voice, but the monster took away Woody and Buzz. Jesse, the only toy left, tries to hide, but receives help from another toy named Combat Carl. He talks about how much he missed his owner Billy, how he lost his hand to the monster, and advised Jesse to just run and save herself while she still can. Combat Carl gets taken while Jesse hides in the shower, but the monster still found her anyway, and the beast is actually an iguana named Mr. Jones. It turns out he's been taking toys inside the motel so his owner, the motel manager, can sell them for profit. Jesse gets reunited with her friends, Combat Carl, and meets some new toys like Pocketeer, Old Timer, a Lego Bunny, a Pez Cat, a Fisher Price sized construction worker, and Combat Carl Jr. The manager picks up Woody and seals him in a box to sell him away. Jesse is the next to go, but before he can seal her up, the repair person came to fix the family's car. This gives Jesse a chance to open the glass door to free the toys, but she's not tall enough. Combat Carl came up with an idea that Jesse has to get Woody from the delivery truck by sealing herself in a box. Of course, she doesn't want to do it. But Combat Carl gave her some words of advice to boost her courage. Combat Carl never gives up. Combat Carl finds a way. Jesse never gives up. Jesse finds a way. She frees a robot named Transitron, which is a transforming toy parody of Transformers and Voltron, and asks him to close the box flaps on her while putting another box on top of it. It seems like her early freedom plan was working, but the delivery woman noticed the cowgirl's box was on tape. She still goes to the delivery truck, but now she has to figure out a way to escape her box. With pure luck and a stroke of genius, Jesse finds a letter with a paperclip and uses the clip's point to cut open the box. The stars of Woody drowned them made it back to the manager's office, but Jesse got a better idea, opening the curtains for Bonnie and her mom. Suddenly, Mr. Jones jumps out and tries to drag her away. After beating the iguana to throw up Combat Carl's hand, the cowgirl pulled Potato Hand's arm out of the reptile's mouth, ripping the curtains completely during the pull. This caught Bonnie's attention as her mom glared at the manager with displeasure. 
all Bonnie's toys made it back safe and sound, but they panic that Mr. Potato Head is missing again. But he was just over the corner, feeling relieved that his arm is back before the car spilled all of his body parts. In the end, the motel toys all escape and use the delivery truck to find their way back home. Combat Carl can finally reunite with his owner, Billy, and Bonnie's mom calls the police on the motel manager for stealing her daughter's toys as he tries to run away from them. Don't you just love a happy Pixar ending, even when it's on television? But when it comes to making a Toy Story Halloween special, there are tons of ways to make a franchise like this into a spooky fun adventure. When you look back at all the Toy Story movies, they were never a stranger into adding some dark moments that left us in shock. Rather it be Sid's toys, the kid himself, Woody's arm nightmare, scenes with the caterpillar room and the junkyard climax, or anything that involves Gabby Gabby and the Bensons. In Toy Story Terror, it can get a little freaky when you first watch it. Not only do we see the toys suddenly disappearing without a single trace, but whenever Jesse is inside some small spaces like a box, it can feel like the walls are closing in with little to no exit based on her perspective. And the special made a very smart move on making Jesse the star of the adventure. It's a throwback to the second movie when Jesse gets stored away in a box from the popular song When She Loved Me. She's been trapped in a box for years, she feared that no one would open it up and would have to live the rest of her life in storage. Although she lived happily with new owners like Andy or Bonnie, the past still comes back to haunt her. However, she does manage to face her fears thanks to her wits and support from her friends both old and new. In fact, there are lots of continuity presented throughout the special, like Woody and Jesse are considered valuable since they are a part of the Woody's Roundup collection, and one of the best callbacks of all time is having Combat Curl from the first movie as one of the main characters. As you expect, he's meant to be a parody of war action figures like G.I. Joe, and he takes survival very seriously. When they're caught by Mr. Jones, it feels no toy will be able to see each other again or their owners. But when it comes to Combat Carl, he brings a lot of energy to this. Jesse, what? listen to me! Remember your training! But I don't have any training! Well, forget about that! Best of all, he is voiced by Carl Weathers, who is heavily known to play Apollo Creed for the Rocky movies and Greek Karga from The Mandalorian. What's even more funny is that they include another combat curl, but smaller, without going through the same dilemma that Buzz went through with the other Buzz Lightyears. They make a great team. As for the rest of the motel toys, they made some memorable moments thanks to their animation, like the Lego bunny morphing into a staircase, or the pest cat becoming the lookout due to her long neck mechanic. Even though it's a Halloween special, it can have some funny moments thanks to the dialogue of the characters and their over-the-top expressions. The only flaw I have and what's keeping it away from being a perfect Toy Story special is this hedgehog named Prickle Pants. He's one of Bonnie's toys that loves theater arts and acting, and he takes them very seriously. His role in the special is that he has to address the cliches and formulas when taking part of a horror movie. The problem is that whenever he brings them up, it just ruins the suspense that the toys are disappearing or that they're being chased by something dangerous. He doesn't even use his horror movie knowledge to help his friends or anything. He just brings them up much to the other toys' annoyance. All great horror films start slowly. You see, they're designed... Forget it, buddy. Even with that amount of knowledge, won't help you stop the cliches. But do you know what's the craziest thing about this special? It actually received a big legacy like the Toy Story movies. If you own the DVD, they made commercial parodies to some of the motel toys like Old Timer, Combat Curl, and Transitron. One's a regular retro ad, the other is a Japanese commercial with building model kits in a monster costume, and the last one served as a PSA cartoon. Outside of that, characters like Old Timer and Combat Carl didn't end up making appearances in the fourth movie, but it's unlikely they're the same ones from Terror. Speaking of which, do you want to know who directed this special? It was created by Angus McLean. If that name sounds familiar to you, it's the same guy who will later direct the Toy Story spin-off movie, Lightyear. In fact, he wasn't really some sort of new Pixar animator on the block or anything. He was actually one of the oldest animators back in 1997, like Pete Docter, Andrew Stanton, and more. He started out as one of the animators for A Bug's Life, but some of his well-known works were Pixar shorts like Wally's Bernie and Toy Story Small Fry, the computer anime opening for the Buzz Lightyear pilot cartoon, and outside of Lightyear, he was a co-director to the Finding Nemo sequel, Finding Dory. They were all great projects, and this Halloween special is no exception. Toy Story Terror is a great addition to the Toy Story series with a suspenseful story, wonderful animation, lovable characters both old and new, and a strong moral about facing fears. If you love Toy Story or you're looking for some amazing Toy Story projects after the trilogy, 
then there's a high chance that you will like this. It's still worth watching around Halloween or outside of it. Pixar may not be done yet with Woody and the gang, but the toys are still going strong. Even if the years go by, the legacy of that Toy Story achieved will never die. Because, just like Woody, Buzz, or Jesse, it's brave enough to try out new adventures. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give it 9 Mr. Potato Head pieces. I'm Matt Harry Patrick, and now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to watch the Lost Finale episode of Woody's Roundup. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this, check out these other videos, or feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more upcoming reviews and other projects. I'll see you soon.